everybody. Just, just looking around at the great array of signs here shows just what a huge issue the future of Melbourne has become to the people of Melbourne. So there is such a broad representation from right across Melbourne, from the outer suburbs, from the green wedge areas, right through to the, to the innermost suburbs, really concerned about the most extraordinary range of issues, ranging from trees being felled for infrastructure development, um, to intensification of residential areas, to the development, the redevelopment of large activity centres, infrastructure, in, lack of infrastructure and problems of transport. The, the issues are enormous. They are not being addressed properly by the government and they don't look as if they are going to be addressed. So you know what your issues are and they do, they do come down, I think, to three general levels of concern. One is the fact that the government is not listening to you and us. There are a whole series of, pro of processes, planning processes occurring in this state and you are being locked out of the consideration of those processes. Yes. When, yes. when you actually then have to object and make submissions on particular issues, local planning issues, you usually lose because VCAT side about 85% of the time with the development industry. Yes. I think the second issue is the planning system itself. It is rigged against residents. Yes. And it's going to get worse. The government um, is in the process of us rewriting the developer-friendly planning system to make it even more developer-friendly. So they are deregulating the planning system. They are doing it through the private sector. They have consultative committees that residents are not represented on. And this is incredibly serious. The entire planning system is being rewritten and you are not involved in this process at all. You'll, they'll give token recognition to you at the end. So this planning system is rigged and it's going to be even more rigged. And thirdly, there are just a whole series of really critical issues and I think the ones that are most concerning are the plethora of high-rise development. Melbourne is being turned into a high-rise city. Nobody, nobody asked that this happen. It is not mentioned in Plan Melbourne. The new government strategic plan does not mention high-rise. Now, how can a strategic plan for the future of Melbourne not mention massive issues like high-rise? And let's be under no illusion here. The plan is to turn Melbourne into a high-rise city from places like Broadmeadows, Sunshine, Footscray, through the inner areas, Mooney Ponds, all your inner urban areas are now feeling this threat, right? Because it's not only the residential areas, it's the commercial one along all our wonderful main, main strips for our shopping centres, all that wonderful high amenity Victorian and 20s architecture is going to be pulled down and replaced with medium and high rise towers. It's already happening. And for those of you that live in the inner suburbs with the mixed use development, this is extraordinary. I mean, whole areas like Collingwood are going to be pulled down. Fitzroy, they're all under enormous threat. Um, if we go out further, the residential, the residential zones have been rewritten by this government with a subterfuge trying to pretend with one of the most extraordinary pieces of spin I've ever seen that it's in the interests of residents to have further deregulation and a, re and a lessening of control. So this just isn't true. Um, and then all the other issues that you're concerned about, ranging from open space and so on, they are all legitimate concerns and they're all incredibly important. So it's extremely important that you keep up this fight. This, is, this should only be the beginning. You coming here today, I think it's such a wonderful representative turnout 
This is such a major issue that is now a big political issue. There is 18 months to the next election. 18 months to the next election and if there is a campaign and a rolling series of resident programmed actions, you can make a difference because at the moment the whole system is being run for and on behalf of the development industry. The government, the government is on the tape basically, it's getting about $8 billion from land related taxes. Eight billion dollars and the government doesn't want to give it up. Now even though the government knows it doesn't have to do it this way, you can still get development, you don't have to do it this way, they refuse to change the, the model. And finally, this is what the government's doing is only beginning, it's not just high-rise, it's the system. For example, um, there is a fast tracking system um, where applications have to be processed within 10 days and that was originally brought in by the Liberal government for only supposedly small issues, minor issues and only in a very small number of cases, about 3%. The Labor government wants to double that to 7%, then to 14% and there are now rumours that it's going to go going to go to 30% and what this means is that there is going to be code assessed applications. So you will not be invited or even allowed to make submissions. You won't be notified. There'll be many multi-unit development as of right without any rights for objection. Now, this is where this government is going and they're keeping it a secret. So, in conclusion, I think a lot of people expected more of this government. Over the last 10 years, we've had governments that have embraced high-rise development. There have been some improvements such as residential zones I think were an improvement. We're going backwards again. Um, I think a lot of people expected more and we haven't got more. We've got less and this is being seen, I think this is being seen rightly as a betrayal of resident interests and I think people don't like to be betrayed. So keep up the fight. This should only be the beginning. I wish you well because I think what we all want is to leave a Melbourne that has high amenity, high heritage and a decent place to live, not only for ourselves but our children. And if we do not pass on the wonderful things about Melbourne to our children because we sat back and watched the government wreck it on behalf of the development industry, then we will regret that and I think look back on it uh, with, with um, great sadness. So good luck, keep up the fight. Yeah.